Weather conditions can greatly affect landscape photography naturally. And here in the United Kingdom, we do tend to get a lot of bad weather. Now, bad I mean wind and rain and sort of like cold conditions. And at times we also get bright, clear skies like does everybody else. But what do you shoot in those conditions? Well, I like to uh, shoot something a bit different to make something of those conditions. Now, on a recent trip, I went to North Wales and the conditions were really, really stormy, very, very bad, you would think, for photography, but you've got to make the most of those conditions. And it made me immediately think of square format, black and white. It's probably my favorite format of all, in a six by six, so medium format. But rather than take something like the Bronica or a really sharp camera like my Minolta twin lens reflex, I thought I'd go with a couple of different cameras. Now, I opted for the Holger and the pinhole, the zero image pinhole. Cameras I've used on and off over maybe sort of 10, 15 years in the past, but I thought I'd take the pair of them. And because the reason is they sort of complement each other. They're both uh, sort of low resolution, mushy, soft, atmospheric, and you can actually mix and match the images from a Holger and a square format pinhole. They don't look uh, sort of at odds with each other. They work quite well. So a quick look at the first camera, the Holger. Now this is a, a six by six film camera and I had it loaded with Ilford HP5 Plus on the day. I'll explain why in the video. It is very simple. It has one shutter speed, about a hundredth of a second. It's sticking at the moment. That's because it's a Holger. And you just look through a little square, a little round window, sorry, in the back. I've got elastic bands on it because the back tends to fall off and the film drops out and it ruins it. There you go. That's all it is. Little single piece of plastic as the lens. Very simple, very straightforward. And it only has rudimentary focusing. So here we have the uh, about three feet, um, about six feet, maybe about 12 feet and sort of infinity. And that's as simple as you can possibly get with a camera. The other camera I decided to take with me, also my zero image pinhole. This is a bit nicer construction. It's made out of teak. It's a little, little box. Uh, very simple again though. Here's the shutter. Open. Closed. Yeah, couldn't be much simpler than that. So uh, your shutter speeds obviously aren't very accurate, but they run into many seconds anyway. So not really too much of a problem with getting an accurate exposure, especially if you use a black and white film. Uh, I've used a black and white film on the day. It gives me plenty of uh, latitude. Um, I'll just show inside the camera briefly. Slide the back off. Has a little pinhole there. That's where the light comes through. Put the film in here. You wind it on to this one with a little windy knob on this side here. That just sort of winds around like that in terms of the film. Terrible demonstration there. Probably the worst demonstration of a pinhole camera in history. Uh, yeah, so very simple and straightforward. So yeah, let's go and do some shooting and come back and look at some of the images. So the most difficult thing about uh, shooting on a day like today is getting out the car. Because I'm lovely and warm in here. I've got a hot cup of coffee. I've had the heated seats on all the way. And uh, now I'm faced with basically storm out to sea and um, huge crashing waves but as we all know that's where the the good photos will come from um, next decision is to decide on which film to load up I only have two films with me FP4 plus and HP5 plus and I'm gonna go out and to decide which film is going on which camera I'm gonna take a, a light meter reading and I'll take it from there Right, well there's no way I can load a film in that wind and the spray is coming up really badly and there's also no way I'm getting near that water. I mean I'm right next to the uh, lifeboat station but uh, I don't want them coming out to rescue me because um, they probably wouldn't be able to get me out that surf. So I will take my light meter reading uh, from behind this bit of shelter and uh, decide what I'm going to shoot with first. It's uh, decision time and it's a little bit too windy um, to actually use the pinhole at the moment. A bit of a shame because the, uh, 
the lighting is pretty good and there's so much movement in the water but it's just going to blow over in these multiple seconds it would take to expose so I'm going to go with the Holger to start with and a roll of uh, HP 5 plus my light meter readings confirm that the fixed aperture of f11 and 1 25th of a second are absolutely spot on for these conditions if it had been a bit darker I would have pushed the film one stop and compensated for that in development if it was a bit lighter the film would be overexposed but that's not a problem with HP 5 plus so uh, ideal lighting conditions and I'll be able to work handheld down by the breakwater So I'm not going too near to the sea now because the tide is on its way in and it's being pushed up by that strong gale force wind and it only takes one rogue wave and there'll be no more vlogs so caution is uh, getting the better of me I think I'll walk down the promenade and see if I can get any interesting buildings or railings or shapes or steps and maybe if the wind abates, I'll get a chance to shoot with a pinhole too. I've enjoyed the last hour or so shooting that roll of HP 5 Plus in the Holger. Uh, very tricky, I'm not sure what they're going to look like, um, but I do feel like that part of the day is over and I want to actually now move on to shoot with the, the pinhole camera. And I think the only way I'm going to force myself to do that is by actually sticking it on the tripod and getting out there and shooting with it. So I'll load up a roll of FP4 Plus which will give me nice longer exposures and easier to manage with the, uh, the simple shutter and see how we get on.
can be very tricky to compose pinhole images because it's such a wide field of view. Sorry, I'll just get a bit of shelter here. It's such a wide field of view that uh, you can't really preview it with the likes of your iPhone, and uh, it's difficult to yeah, visualize without the use of some compositional device. Now, my GoPro, which I'm recording this on, I normally record in 2.7K linear mode, which gives me a, a fairly defished view of the world, but it's not very wide. Well, it's wide, but not very wide. So I've switched it over to the widest mode, and that will give me a very good representation of what I will get with the pinhole camera. So this part of the video may look a bit uh, in terms of distortion and the like, because I'm going to shoot the whole thing in a sort of pinhole fashion. Right, I'm getting an indicated 16 seconds at f about 128. This is actually 138, the f-stop on this, so allowing for reciprocity failure and uh, a little bit more for that extra small aperture beyond 128. I'm going to give it uh, 30 seconds rating the film at ISO 100. That should give me enough, um, enough shadow detail as the contrast isn't that, uh, that, that rich today. Rich? It's quite, it's quite limited. You know, one of the side benefits to shooting with the, the Holger and the little pinhole camera today is one's made of plastic and one's made of wood. So um, there's no corrosion really. I mean, I've got a little bit of brass fittings, brass, excellent, on the pinhole camera. But on the Holger, you know, I could just run it under the tap when I get back. It's hardly going to affect the optics or the uh, delicate shutter mechanism, is it? I'm getting absolutely battered out there now. The uh, the rain has eased off, but the wind has increased, and I'm absolutely starving as well. So uh, rather than try and push on and shoot probably another 10 frames of pinhole, and pinhole is quite slow work, so that could well equate to an hour or more. I'm going to actually have a break in the car, get something to eat, and drive down to another section of beach, which is a little bit further back towards home, where I think I can get some uh, better shots. Ah, righty ho, I've uh, driven back down the coast a few miles and I had planned to shoot some uh, dramatic sort of spray and beach scenes but if I can just spin you around over there the actual beach is uh, getting pounded with surf and there's actually no way I can get onto it at all so the plan B is to head down to a bit of a mining area where there is a, a jetty which deposits limestone into boats and sends it off all over Britain and uh, other parts of the world and I'm thinking with the uh, pinhole and possibly the Holger I could make something of it. Another thing worth considering if you're shooting by the coast in stormy weather is all that lovely salty spray that's going to get kicked up into your face all over your camera, your tripod, your vlogging gear. Now, as we know, salt water and electronics and metals, particularly the likes of aluminiums, steel, etc., unless it's stainless, absolutely hate salt water. So I tend to have a a bunch of older kit like my old Velbon Rexy tripod which I now relegate for conditions such as this. It's about nine years old and I've hammered it and it's getting really really ropey so I don't mind if it gets wet and salty. When I get home I'll give it a hose off, a bit like the vlogging tripod. The GoPro is in a little plastic housing as it always is even though it's waterproof just to keep all the, uh, the grime and crud off it. Apologies, my lens is getting covered in salt water. Just give you a quick wipe. That's better. Now, in addition to the more obvious shots of uh, big skies and sea structures like breakwaters, um, 
there are the smaller shots, the more intimate detail shots that you would tend to associate with the close-up work, macro work. But pinhole, obviously with its um, almost infinite depth of field, can also render these quite interesting. So I have come just beyond the, uh, the beach defences and I've found some old uh, posts and some rusted bolts and I am actually going to try shooting a very close-up image of these just to show you what it's capable of. Uh, now this exposure is uh, is long to say the least. It's uh, I'm running it about 90 seconds because, as you can see, it is extremely dark down there. There's no sky in it at all, and with reciprocity failure of the film, I'm going to give it a lot more exposure. And I think I'll do a second exposure at three minutes as well, just to be on the safe side. Now one final thing worth mentioning is if you don't have a spot meter, you don't, you don't need one by the way for uh, pinhole work, if you just get an app on your phone like this little light meter app and you take a reading from the subject uh, like that, it will give you the shutter speed or the exposure time for the speed of film which you set on the little dial. Now on the back of the pinhole camera there's a little manual calculator. Now the shutter on this said two seconds at f22 so all I do is turn the little dial here to be two seconds at f22 and then I read off what the pinhole exposure is which is f138 I believe uh, yeah I think it is you can't see my eyes aren't that good so you don't really need a fancy metering application to get the readings but one thing I will say if you're using traditional black and white speed you will need to double or quadruple the exposure once you get into the sort of 15 and 30 seconds range because it suffers from something called reciprocity. If you use a, uh, a colour film like a sort of Fuji slide film or you use one of the more modern T-Max films or Across you'll be okay up to about two minutes, no compensation necessary. Now I think once this is done I'm going to uh, carry on down the path to my original destination which is the the jetty and uh, see if I can get some interesting images down there but it's it's nice at the moment because I am sheltered from the wind and rain and also the uh, I think the wind has abated quite a lot the the surf was crashing over here 15 minutes ago and it's really eased up now Well, excuse the audio quality, I'm just using my GoPro to do a time lapse. Um, so yeah, I am, I am getting quite a nice view across to this, uh, this, this jetty. It's a range jetty, I believe is the name of it, and it dumps limestone, like I say, into ships. And this, the wind has eased off, and that's made it possible for me to use the pinhole effectively. I'm shooting at around about five seconds. Now, that is based on a meter reading off these concrete posts here, which are probably a good mid-tone, not really bothering doing a sort of normal spot metering because the, the differences are quite significant between this and traditional photography. The pinhole is much softer, much lower contrast. Now the FP4 Plus is a film with a little bit of reciprocity built in. So to be on the safe side, I've taken a second shot at 10 seconds and that will definitely give me a lot more shadow detail and also show a little bit more movement in those clouds and uh, water. Well that's the shooting done, so let's head back home now, I'll get these developed, uh, not sure what developer yet, I'll pop the details up on the screen, open up in Lightroom, have a look at the characteristics of the Holger versus the pinhole, maybe even make a print too. 
Right, well that was really enjoyable, that trip. It started off really, really stormy, wet, windy, and cold, and it got really bright at the end, and I used a roll of film in each of the cameras. So without further ado, let's have a look at some of those images. So uh, these are the, uh, the images from the trip. I have manipulated them and put them into the video, obviously, and let's look at some of the ones I put in there. This is the first one uh, of the, uh, the sort of jetty, sorry, the, the sort of slipway actually. And as you can see, being a Holger shot, nothing is sharp. Um, it's all fairly fuzzy. I focused sort of roughly in the middle distance, but nice atmosphere. The clouds particularly come out really well with Holgers because it's a very low contrast lens. And uh, it's very easy to get a lot of shadow detail in those clouds. You don't need much manipulation. So a bit of a side benefit really to the cheap technology. Another one here, which was the, uh, the bottom of the poster uh, with the, the couple looking out to see. Came out very nice and easy again. It's uh, it's remarkably remarkably sharp in the centre. This is one of the things about the Holgers that people forget, and with most lenses, that they're nearly always sharp in the centre. I mean, this is a single element piece of plastic, but um, yeah, performance in the centre is great, and it drops off beautifully at the edges, which gives you that natural vignetting. Uh, and let's have a look at one of the pinhole ones. This is this is one of my favourite pinhole ones, and the reason is I followed my my rule of pinholing, which is get up close. Now uh, I don't always do that. I forget. I tend to think it's like a normal camera with a wide angle, it's not. You need to really get into the, the scene and put it as close as possible to objects. So all this down here in the foreground is, well, sharp, you know, it's in focus because it's a pinhole. And uh, another thing you notice about pinhole is there is a, I won't say no distortion because it, it does give a very exaggerated uh, perspective, field of view, but you haven't got a lens. So you haven't got to worry about the, uh, the sort of bending of the horizons and the straight lines, etc. They stay straight because uh, it is just the rays of light hitting the film. So you've got this beautifully, um, you know, level uh, horizon and, and a very, very, very simple scene. Again, naturally vignetted uh, with a nice soft contrast. So very, very straightforward and easy to process. But I'll actually be honest, my favorite shot from the trip, surprisingly, was the, the one of, uh, there we go. The one of the close-up of the bolts and the old wood. Now, what I liked about this is it really brought out the, the, the texture of the wood and it had sort of a glow about it, a bit of an aura. Uh, it was only a, you know, a few inches away and uh, it's, it's really nice. I mean, it really is good. I'll just get the prints because I think the prints probably better uh, demonstrate what I'm talking about. You know, the first one is a, anyway, it's a Holger shot. So that was the, uh, the beach where I got up reasonably close to that log and uh, yeah, I actually focused up, I focused, I sort of guessed where the log was, probably about sort of six feet away. And I got that lovely softening in the background on the, uh, the distant, um, distant uh, shoreline and onto the little orm, onto the hill there. And then of course my, my close up one of the, uh, the rocks, the pebbles, uh, with a bit of seaweed in there and the, that lovely horizon line and, and the soft sky. That came out really well, that one did. And surprised I got no movement on the, the camera either, so quite pleased there. And finally this one, which, uh, which I really do like. I mean, it's, it's only printed on some cheap matte paper, but I think if I printed that uh, as an A2 on a, a textured paper, sort of one of the, uh, the natural soft textured photo speeds with a bit of, uh, a bit of, a bit of I don't know, it's got a bit, of, uh, a bit of 3D to it, a bit of depth. This is very much like clean and clinical. But for these images, I think it suits the sort of warm tone, uh, roughened up paper surface, you know, with a bit of fiber maybe sticking out of it. One of those canvases would do very well. So without further ado, I'm gonna wrap it up there. But just to mention that uh, I have taken the cameras out again on another trip up a mountain, um, really because the conditions weren't ideal for traditional photography, but completely different conditions. But that's for another video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again on the next trip.